Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing the principles behind electron transfer reactions. So what we're going to be talking about in this video, we're going to go through the principles involved in electron transfer. We're going to go through two particular examples of reactions where this is happening, so copper in silver nitrate and zinc in copper 2 sulfate. Um, we're then going to think about the nature of these metal displacement reactions, which is what this is a, a type of. And the focus on the activity series of metals, and then use some of the concepts that we've developed to explain how metal displacement reactions work. Okay, so thinking about electron transfer, it's at this where we're thinking about a chemical change or a chemical reaction that's happening or occurring by the process of transferring electrons from one particle to another, so one atom or one ion to another. And so there's two processes that are happening simultaneously here, that one substance or one species is losing electrons or donating electrons, and that process is called oxidation. Um, and then the opposite process is where electrons are being gained or accepted, and so we call that reduction. So oxidation and reduction, the two complementary processes at work in this kind of process. Now the reason that we care about it is that this kind of a chemical process is useful as a source of electrical energy. It's the basis of batteries, essentially, and or in all forms of uh, and technologies. And if we can make electrons that are being transferred in this way flow through an external circuit, then we can harness that energy. But so first I want to go through two kind of examples of, of where this is happening. So two little demonstrations. I'm not showing you live in the lab, obviously, but um, that this is there's some examples of where this is occurring. In the image you can see here, we have a piece of copper wire that is coiled up and then placed into a solution of silver nitrate. And that you can see that um, there are successive changes that occur in this beaker over time. Um, and so we're seeing um, seeing changes that are occurring around the wire and we're also noticing some changes in the solution itself. So the first thing, especially you can see in the, this end picture, that particles of silver metal have formed or deposited. You kind of, it almost looks like kind of ice crystals or snowflakes that are actually kind of um, crusted onto it. Um, the solution has gone from a colourless to being blue, increasingly blue over time. And the reason that this happens, and we're going to go through in a minute, is that electrons are being transferred from the copper metal to the silver. Now let's have a look at an, another example where we've got some zinc metal placed into a solution of copper 2 sulfate. Okay, so we've got a blue um, colour of the solution and then the silvery colour of the zinc metal. And so we're seeing um, particles of copper metal that have deposited. They look kind of black in the, with this, this kind of structure and appearance, but it's, it's just a bit of a, a trick of the light. And then the solution has gone from a very distinctive blue to an almost colourless or very, very pale blue. And so in this case, we've got electrons that have transferred from the zinc metal to the copper 2 plus ion that is in solution. So if you could actually kind of see underneath here that the zinc metal itself would have corroded, that it, it, it wouldn't be as complete as it was before. It had been dissolved or eaten away. Um, and the same sort of would have occurred um, with the copper wire in the previous example. So these are both examples of what we call metal displacement reactions, where we get a reaction between two metals. One that's a metal as a solid, like the copper in this example here, and the other metal is in solution as it, in the form of its ion, so like silver or Ag+. So this isn't between two solid metals or two ions, this is one solid metal and one ion. And when we're combining them together or allowing them to interact, that we get um, a, a change that's occurring. Now, we're going to come back and we're going to try to explain exactly the mechanism of this, but one thing I want to bring in just now is this idea called the activity series of metals. So what happens is that um, not all metals react equally. Okay, that we take all of the metals that we encounter as solids and that we can rank them in terms of their reactivity or what we would call just generally activity because it's not only about their kind of properties of chemical changing. Okay, and so we, we rank them kind of relative to one another. So highly active metals react with oxygen in the air, often explosively, um, spontaneous combustion. Active metals will react with water. Um, moderately active metals um, will react with dilute acid, and then less active metals react with concentrated acid. And then some metals won't even do that. 
um, or only under the very specific circumstances. So gold is one example. But so what we can see is that we've, we have this continuum from most active to least active. So of this kind of series. Now, you don't need to be able to memorize this, but we do need to be able to work with this information. In, and it also helps us to make sense of the, this, these, why these displacement reactions would happen. So the, the principle is that a more active metal will displace a less active metal when it from its solution. So we take a more active metal, like copper, and we place it into a solution of a less active metal, silver plus. Okay, the more active metal, the copper, will dissolve. And, we, and then we say that it has oxidized. Okay, thinking about those, those labels we talked about at the start. The less active metal, the silver in this case, deposits. So it is reduced. Um, is that you know? So it has changed in this way. Um, <clears throat> now the thing that's interesting or, or important about that is that if these metals are the other way around, so if we take if we took silver metal and we placed it in a copper solution, we would get no reaction. Okay, so just thinking about these two. So if we when we put copper metal in a silver solution, uh, silver nitrate solution, we got a reaction. We got this this um, changeover. Whereas then. Um, we have, um, if we put silver metal in a copper 2 plus solution, there'd be no reaction, no change at all would occur because um, we'd be placing a solid of a less active metal in a, a solution of a more active one. Okay, so there wouldn't be this swapping that takes place. Okay, we can just want to visualize how this process works for you a little bit now. And thinking about metal displacement reactions, the only reason that they occur is because of this electron transfer that's happening. So what we've got a, a different reaction now, if we took an iron, um, a piece of iron, like in a nail or some steel wool, and we placed it in a solution of copper 2 plus, then we would see this change occur where we would form copper metal and we would form um, Fe2 plus, an iron 2 solution. Okay, so what I'm, I'm visualizing, the blue box is the iron, the green box is the copper. Okay, the copper with its two pluses, and then iron, as what we'll see, is these are representing two electrons that this iron atom holds. As these two species are allowed to interact with each other, then those two electrons from that iron atom transfer across to the copper. Okay, so now we're left with iron two plus, and we have copper as a neutral solid, uh, a neutral atom that forms a solid. So the, the iron transferred two electrons. So the iron metal lost electrons, therefore we'd say it's oxidized. The copper 2 plus gained electrons, so we'd say that it is reduced. So metal displacement reactions are able to happen because of oxidation and reduction. It's the, the mechanism, the underlying process that allows this to happen. And so that's the loss and gain of electrons. Okay, so just to, to quickly recap, we, we talked about the principles of how electrons can transfer to cause chemical change. We went through two examples of the copper and silver nitrate, zinc and copper sulfate, where this kind of chemical change was occurring. We, uh, we introduced them as, as examples of metal displacement reactions, and we went through some of the principles. We related it to the activity series of metals, and we went through how to explain how these reactions occur based on our principles of electron transfer. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.